I'm working on this F-250, it's a 99. And the issue that it's having is when you drive it on the highway for very long, it'll just hang at 2,000 RPM, doesn't matter what you do, unless if you turn it off and restart it, it'll go right back down to about 800 RPM, 750 where it's supposed to be. But this one, until I turn it off and restart it, it's just going to do that. So I pop the hood. You'd think it's an IAC or idle air control motor. Move. It's just stuck there. And if I turn it off and restart it, it'll idle down low. I'll demonstrate. I was going to check it on the computer, but I'll get it to get stuck again, I'm sure. So then you start it up, and it's not raging high. So it's not the idle air control motor that's causing the problem. There's some other outside kind of a thing that's making it idle high. The only idles high, like it'll behave, and see if I turn on the, or plug in, excuse me, the idle air control motor again. That's the idle air control motor. If I plug it in, it'll kick right back up where it's supposed to be, like almost immediately. It's like nothing ever happened. See, now we're idling at about a thousand RPM for now. Rev the engine, it doesn't get stuck, everything's fine, it goes back down nice and easy. So uh, it makes me think that the idle air control motors, that's a little high. But then the check engine lights on, it's kind of in a fail mode. There we go back down. But it leads me to believe that the idle air control motor's fine. Um, but what a funky idle problem. This had a cylinder misfire on number three from a cracked spark plug. I'm wondering if it zapped the computer through the grounding circuit. Okay, so like I say, I went through and got this thing figured out. At least I know what the problem is now. Uh, what it is, is when you turn it off when it was idling clear up at two, um, you'd turn it off and then you'd start it back up. And it would go again. And it was only doing this after you drive on the highway for a while at high RPMs. So what I did to diagnose it, aside from all the computer stuff that yielded nothing, is this hose goes to the idle air control valve. I thought the computer was bad. I thought it was zapped. I was about to replace the ECM. But I pinched this shut. And when it was idling high and I pinched this shut, it would cause it to idle back down and that's all I did go like that and it would just behave and after that it was totally fine so what was happening is the airflow going through here when the uh, idle air control valve which I showed you before it's that silver one back there all right come on focus there it is so when you have high airflow because you're on the highway for a long time that idle air control valve would get stuck and then you'd have full flow going through and then when you let off the gas it would go right back to what it was so you had a big airflow through here and when i'd hit the gas it would just add to the airflow from that so i thought you know something else was funky but uh throttle position sensor readings were good i had no change on them you know from when it was working or not working properly and uh basically i was getting maximum airflow through this and the maximum airflow gets you just over 2000 rpm so like i say you just pinch it that interrupts the airflow it enables the idle air control motor to relax back to where it's supposed to be and then uh, it just works after that so that's it as you can see i had the cover taken off in order to take the cover off you have to loosen this and pull this off because it goes over here and clicks in there I was checking the idle stop, I was just going nuts trying to figure out why this was doing what it was doing and why it was intermittent. When a problem like this is manifested intermittently, typically the problem is something electronic. In this case it is electronic mechanical with the idle air control valve or idle air control solenoid. But uh, what a tricky little sucker. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, I hate replacing those things if it's not that, but you know, I hate replacing the ECM too if it's not that. I spent so much time on wire harness inspection as it is, you know, probing and whatnot, but maybe it's a good idea, you know, if you see this video to do this test, you know, early on, pinching it off, and that'll tell it. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for watching.